Tesla has no advantage, no technological advantage, no software advantage, no battery advantage, no advantages whatsoever. Hey, I'm Steven and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to watch a few clips over the last couple of years showcasing the evolving opinion of Bob Lutz, ex-General Motors executive who, well, to put it bluntly, has been exceptionally skeptical of Tesla. So let's see if Bob's opinion has changed at all over the last three years as Tesla has executed, grown, reduced cost, increased production, enhanced their brand and plenty more. But first, hey guys, if you're in the US and you'd like up to two free stocks, check out the link in the description to Webull. If you open a new account and fund it with $100, you get two free stocks, one of them valued up to $1,400. And if you're in Australia, the UK or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake using the link in the description. Let's get back to it. So let's see what Bob had to say about Tesla in early 2017. I am a well-known Tesla skeptic and it's- But it keeps defying expectations, well, you have to give it that. Somehow it's- levitating and I think it's Elon Musk is the greatest salesman in the world. He paints this vision of an unlimited future uh, aided and abetted by some analysts who say, oh. I mean, it's just like, he, he, it's like Elon Musk has been beamed down from another <laughs> planet to show us mortals how to run a, how to run a company. Well, that turned out to be a rather prophetic statement, didn't it? A little bit ironic that Bob was mocking Elon's ability to lead as a CEO. I mean, look at what SpaceX and Tesla have done in the last few years. The reason I take the time to point this out is because a ton of people have seen Elon Musk and been scared, Daddy, please hold me. He's so different. I'm so scared. It's not normal. I'm scared. He's different, Daddy. I'm so... <laughs> Get away from me, Elon. And they've missed the forest for the trees. Well, people like Bob Lutz were pooping their pants, freaking out about the fact that Tesla doesn't have dealership networks, or the fact that they don't advertise, the fact you can order their vehicles. I could just keep going on, right? Instead of people looking at this and going, hmm, this is different. Let me think my way through this. Does this make sense? Could this work? Is this a viable way of doing things? They're just getting blind and blocked by their own confirmation bias and ego and convention and just cannot see any potential for Tesla to succeed if they don't do things exactly the same way. Pro tip, the reason now that everyone's finally cottoning on to the fact that Tesla is gonna dominate the future of transportation is because they've been doing things differently and better and executing very well for many years running. People are finally waking up to this fact. The fact is, uh, it's a constant cash drain. They're highly dependent on federal government and state incentives for money, which constantly flows in. They have capital raises all the time. The, even the high-end cars that they build now cost more to build than they're able to sell them for. I've covered this before. I'll say it again very briefly. It's BS. Tesla does make money selling vehicles. They have been and no, they're not dependent on subsidies. Here's what happens. When you've got a big brain and you manage money at a large company and your goal is to grow, when money comes in, instead of you going, oh great, we made a profit, go shareholders. You take that money, you engage your big brain and you think, okay, great. How can we redeploy this capital to further our mission, to scale production, to reduce costs, etc.? And then you do it. So if you have a surface level look, sure, it might look like they're losing money, but again, if you use this thing, you actually will understand they're not losing money, they're managing their capital efficiently. And once again, three years later, Tesla's making more electric vehicles than anyone else on earth and doing so very profitably. Why? Because they weren't trying to show a profit to appease dopey shareholders. Mercedes, BMW, Volkswagen, GM, Audi and Porsche are all coming out with 300 mile electric luxury sedans. Well, we know how that one worked out, don't we? The competition is coming, still waiting for the competition to come. I think they're doomed. I, 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 unless somehow the laws of, you have to have more money coming in than going out. Unless they're a somebody, startup though. What, they're what, not what a startup. What does doomed startup. mean? They're startup, they're, their stock been price comes in, years. they go out of business, they have, they have regular competition like other companies. What do you mean by doomed? What the, so at some point, see, their, their upside on pricing is limited because everybody else sells electric vehicles at a loss to get the credits to be able to sell the sport utilities and the pickup truck. So that puts a ceiling on your possible pricing. And if he can't make money on the high-end Model S's and Model X's, which sell, you know, up, up to 100,000 bucks, how in the world is he going to make money on a $35,000 small car? Yes, they're burning a lot of cash, but they're in startup mode. And the trajectory at which they burn cash theoretically won't be the same. They won't have to continue building a gigafactory infinitum. They won't add on new production lines. In terms of subsidies, most of the people who reserve a Model 3 
are doing that without any government subsidies because they run out and they're still willing to buy that car. We'll see. I mean, we'll see. Uh, we'll see. But if he- I think Melissa's face sums that up perfectly. Come on, Bob. We'll see. I mean, we'll see. Uh, we'll see. But if you have a situation where the cost of producing a car, labor and materials is higher than your sell price, your business model is flawed and it's 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 doomed and it's going to fail and i will guarantee the only difference the, the reason for this inflated stock because elon musk said, oh but look at my solar look at solar city look at the panels look at the battery plant the battery plant in my estimation is a joke there is a, there are no cost savings by making a lithium ion plant bigger than other people's lithium ion plants because Making lithium ion cells is a fully automated process anyway. So whether you've got full automation in a small building or 10 times full automation in a big building, you're not saving any money. Yes, you did hear right. Three or so years ago, Bob Lutz clearly advertising his ignorance, claiming that building a large battery factory was not going to bring any meaningful cost reduction to Tesla. I mean, yeah, this is a point where you just stop listening to this guy because clearly he has absolutely no fucking idea what he's talking about. Now, I understand that Bob has some experience in the internal combustion engine automotive industry, but obviously this does not translate to battery electric vehicles. And let's fast forward a year and a half to September 2018 and see how much Bob had changed his tune relating to Tesla, if at all. I've been very consistent for the last two or three years. I've been telling the Tesla fanatics <laughs> Uh, he's got to get his act together quick because global competition is coming. This Audi e-tron is not a big surprise. We've known it was coming for the last two and a half years. Mercedes is going to have one. BMW. Uh, Porsche is going to have a four-door sedan with a 300-mile range. General Motors has announced 20 different electric vehicle models. And the, the, the thing about all of these is they can all be sold at a loss for environmental compliance reasons and the losses on the electric vehicles can be recouped on the, on the on the internal combustion ones which are the ones that you know 95 percent of americans still want so and tesla has no internal combustion engine vehicles on which to recoup the ev losses so what's happening is what i have predicted for the last three years is finally coming to pass is everybody in the global automobile industry is going to be offered, offering uh, high quality, high technology, high range electric vehicles. And uh, the Tesla has no advantage, no technological advantage, no software advantage, no battery advantage, no advantages whatsoever. Do my ears deceive me? I mean, honestly. Anyone who did more than three femtoseconds of research would have known Tesla did have advantages on all of these fronts. I mean, at this point in time, you hear somebody like this come on television, you've done your homework, you think, what a fucking idiot. No idea what he's talking about, shouldn't be talking. Why does he even have a platform? The problem is, and the reason I'm showing you guys this video, is the majority of people, they see an automotive industry expert, Bob Lutz on television, talking trash about Tesla, and just assume, well, he's got experience in the automotive industry, he must know what he's talking about. He's definitely not talking out of his ass and spewing horse shit, is he? Clearly not. So I'm gonna stay away from the stock. I'm gonna sell my stock. I don't think this company's a good investment, etc. These kind of people appearing on the mainstream media, skewing and swaying the opinions and thoughts and investment decisions and actions of retail investors in the wider market can have a huge impact and artificially hold back a stock price, which I believe is what we saw from Tesla from around 2013 till around 2019. This is why people like Bob Lutz appearing on TV going, nah, 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 and people just going, okay, yeah. I mean, he's an expert, so I believe him. Whether they increase Model 3 production or not, they're still hemorrhaging cash at a prodigious rate, and that's not going to stop. I think the jaws are tightening, and I think uh, in another year or two, we'll see a movie called Who Killed Tesla? A uh, conspiracy movie starring uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. How convenient. Bob Lutz making some claims about what Tesla might look like in one or two years time about one or two years ago. So let's see what he had to say this year. I think um, they've achieved a sort of a volume breakthrough with uh, the plant in China opening and selling a lot of Model 3s. Uh, Model 3 is doing, is doing extremely well in Europe. So I think what's happening is uh, the Model 3 after a relatively slow start is finally accelerating and it is uh, the interesting thing is it's not 
the affordable $33,000 uh, every man's EV. It has really become positioned at about fifty-five to sixty thousand dollars, and buyers see it as <clears throat> an alternative to a high-performance BMW 3 Series or a Mercedes. So, as long as they can keep that premium pricing, which is, as I say, a, about thirty thousand dollars over where they had originally talked about, uh, obviously that car is going to be profitable. So, it, I think the vehicle was misplanned. At $33,000, it never would have made any money. At fifty-five dollars to $60,000, that vehicle will make probably as high a contribution margin as, as the uh, original Model S. And then the other thing that Elon has done, which uh, you know, I, I frankly talked about endlessly, he has finally reined in his cost. And he's reduced personnel and reduced unnecessary expenditures. And he's basically done what any other businessman would do in a situation where you're selling a bunch of stuff but you're not profitable. That tells you you have to cut cost. And he has been quite adept. The encouraging thing to me about Tesla is from Elon, there's less talk, less bluster, less here's yep. what I'm going to do in six months. And it seems like he has, he's done what any other CEO or founder would do. He is focusing on the business, focusing on the product, and focusing on cost control. Yep. So Tesla yep. is finally being run like a normal business. I'm not really sure where to start here, guys. So yes, it's great that now Bob is acknowledging Tesla's being run like a proper company. Translation, they're making profitable vehicles. They're actually banking quarterly profits as well. But as we go back to the beginning of this video, 2017, Melissa's calling him out. Bob's saying, oh, Tesla's losing all this money. They're doing blah, blah, blah. She says, no, no, hang on, Bob. They're in growth mode. They're scaling. This won't be sustained long term. They'll become profitable. They're actually reinvesting in growth, scaling, etc. No, doomed, doomed, doomed. Fast forward three years. Tesla's now profitably making EVs because they invested in growth, in scale, in reducing their manufacturing costs, economies of scale, etc. Remember, Bob Lutz is going on television three years ago saying Tesla's doomed, they can't make a profit. Those who've thought a little bit deeper about it are going, well, hang on a minute. No, actually, they are making these vehicles profitably. They're reinvesting that cash and expanding their production capacity, bringing down their costs, etc. Bob, no, no, they're doomed, they're doomed, they're doomed. And now they've brought the cost down as everyone knew it was coming who did any homework and realized what was going on. Like, this isn't a surprise. Bob's sort of suggesting somehow Tesla's turned around, flipped on a dime, and suddenly they're doing things completely differently. No, they're not. They're just further along in their plan. This is not a revelation. But again, someone like Bob comes on TV, talks shit about Tesla, typical retail investor. Oh yeah, this old bloke with a raspy voice must know a few tricks. I oh, believe him. I don't need to think anymore. I don't need to do any homework. He's on CNBS. I believe him. The point I'm trying to make here is these so-called experts with a large platform and a voice that many listen to can heavily influence sentiment around a company's stock price. And year after year, we saw people like Bob Lutz coming on CNBS and spreading FUD, fear, uncertainty, doubt. They're doomed, they're going bankrupt, they can't make a profit, the competition is coming, etc. But now even Bob, the skeptic of skeptics on Tesla, is really coming around. Let's see what he had to say last month. I will freely admit that Elon Musk has done a brilliant job he produces very good cars. He managed to avoid bankruptcy and he managed to avoid uh, the feds preventing him from raising capital after, we, after he was placed under SEC uh, investigation and so forth. So he's dodged a lot of bullets, done a lot of great things, and I give him credit for that. And the cars are very good. And he has built a very valuable brand. One of the smart things he did was he started at the top of the market with a large, expensive car. And he got a lot of, uh, you know, thought leaders, um, uh, wealthy West Coast people and so forth. And then, he, and then he started going down in size. What everybody else did with electric cars is, well, let's make it tiny and cheap and ugly uh, because people want electrification. No, people don't want electrification that badly. They want a nice looking car with great performance. And let's face it, Elon Musk has done that. But the, the rise in stock price and the fact that Tesla is now worth, worth more than uh, FCA, GM, and Ford combined is worth more than Volkswagen, is worth more than Toyota, uh, has nothing to do with reality. Credit where it's due, Bob is starting to come around now, praising Elon, praising the brand, praising the product. When you look at reality, Tesla, albeit still alive, is not, I'll, I'll, I'll say this kindly, 
Tesla is not a very profitable company that creates a, a decent return for its shareholders. Talk about low-hanging fruit. Thanks for the softball, Bob. So let's cover this. I believe this one statement is a microcosm of how and why Bob and many others have been so wrong about Tesla for so long. They're being viewed through the lens of a traditional automaker. Let me know in the comments below, guys. Would you say that Tesla has produced a poor return for investors over the last few years? Now, I see what Bob's getting at here. They haven't been paying a dividend. Terrible return, right? Don't worry about the stock price. Tesla is always struggling for profitability, and yet it's got this huge market cap, and this be, it's referred to as the electric car giant. Well, they may be giants in the electric car business, but annually they do 300,000 cars. 300,000 cars compared to 10 million a year for Toyota, about 8 million a year for GM. So Tesla is not very big. They have very good technology, uh, but so does GM, so does yep. Ford, so does Toyota, mm -hmm. so will Volkswagen and Porsche. One of the most common fallacies around Tesla. Yes, today they're producing around half a million vehicles per year, but today isn't what matters. It's tomorrow. Tesla has far and away the best electric vehicles, bar none. Best performance, lowest running cost, low cost of ownership, best infotainment, software, over-the-air updates, safety, everything, right? They're winning at everything and they have a huge lead. It's not about Tesla today. It's about how dominant Tesla will be in the future. How far ahead of everyone else will they remain? How unassailable is their lead? And Bob, like many others, is completely disregarding the future of Tesla's energy business, solar, Batteries, auto bit of software, never mind autonomous vehicles, never mind future infotainment sales and the major software component, that doesn't count. They're an automotive company and they don't make many cars. I think the issue that he, he touched on is the one that ought to be of concern for the rest of the auto industry. They know that they have to catch Tesla in terms of technology and in terms of the styling and the vehicles that they bring out. And for years, they have sat there and said, trust us, we're gonna come out with these vehicles. Well, so far, they have swung and missed repeatedly. It is time for them to either step up or stop talking. Phil LeBeau absolutely nails it there. To wrap this one up, guys, the whole point of showing you this Bob Lutz's evolving opinion over time is to give you a little bit of an insight into what one of the very prominent voices in the automotive space has been saying about Tesla, what he's been right on, what he's been wrong on, and how his thinking has changed over time. He's gone from Tesla can't make money, they're going bankrupt, Elon's crazy, blah, 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 they don't know how to run a company, what are you doing, etc. to, well, actually they've got a fantastic product, they've got a great brand, they are now profitable, but they don't make many vehicles, so therefore they're irrelevant and their stock price is too high. I've got news, Bob, and everyone else who still thinks that the fact that Tesla today is only producing half a million vehicles is an issue, it's not about today. I keep saying, it's about tomorrow. Tesla's building out production capacity at a staggering rate. Two years time, Tesla will be producing well over 1 million vehicles per year. This is why the stock is moving. People understand they have an absolutely dominant lead in technology, in software, in brand, in everything. They don't need to advertise because the products are so good they sell themselves. And catching up to Tesla now is not a possibility. It's just a race for second place. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem and I love you all. And of course, don't forget your free stocks with Webull. If you're in the US, you can start a new account with Webull using my link below. Deposit $100, you'll get two free stocks, one of them valued up to $1,400. And if you're in Australia, New Zealand, or the UK, you can get a free stock using the link in the description to stake. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular Q&As, our private discord server and more consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so i can keep creating content for you guys there's a link in the description you can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks to learn more click the join button next to subscribe and don't forget to check out our merch store either way the best form of support is you being here and watching so thanks again